Hello everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely great and in today's video i will discuss with you all how to make a resume from scratch for beginners why am i saying beginners is because this video is very much suitable for first years and second years and for freshers also who are working right now but the reason why this video is very beneficial for first years and second years is because i am going to teach you or tell you the ways how you can make sure that you are having the right kind of resume with you when you are in the first year or when you are you know just starting off your career in college because most of the time when first year second year when you try to apply for internships you you have to upload your resume and your clueless you think what should i put in my resume i don't have anything to put so to help you out with these things i am making this video so without further ado let's dive into the video and let's get on my screen and i will be sharing with you guys my resume which i have been using over the period of plus 2 years right now and what i have done what kind of resume template i am using pretty much will be covering everything going to be an exciting day grab your notebook and a pen so that you can take down all the important points and yeah then take your resume to the next level so without further ado let's dive into the video so as you guys can see this is uh, my resume which uh, i am updating from last 2 years so this is the template which i made in my first year of college i believe second semester i made this template and from then i am just updating this resume every month on month so one thing which is very important for you the first thing you have to keep in mind is that upload sorry update your resume every month on month so let's say if i if you have updated your resume this month next month end again check your resume and see whether there's something you can add so i have been updating my resume for last 2 years and it looks like this it's a four page resume right now so i want to clarify that it doesn't mean that you know it doesn't mean your resume has to be only two pages your resume only has to be one page you cannot put a lot of content on resume because i feel the industry has changed the time has changed and right now even like the first resume that you that people refer is the linkedin profile that's the new resume i would say so my resume is four pages long i just have two years of experience two and a half years of working experience and my resume is already four pages and you know the best part now most of you guys will think this resume will not even get shortlisted but let's say out of 100 companies i apply i am able to get close to 45 50 responses from the hr telling that you know i am shortlisted for the next round why is that if you ask me even i don't know the exact reason but i feel it is the template that i have used for my resume there are a lot of platforms on uh, google like you know uh, novo resume resume builder resume builder.io free resume.io a lot of websites if you go and create your resume on the website the template that they have is a very generic template and the chances are really high that your profile will get rejected in the initial stage of uh, the application why because nowadays human beings are not the ones who actually shortlist candidates or the resumes it's basically the algorithm or the you know machine computerized algorithm which basically decides which resume to shortlist and which resume not to shortlist right so never use a uh, resume builder instead so this this resume i have made using google docs so i just opened a google doc i started typing i gave the headings added my picture added few of the important things and i'm done with it right it's very simple but now let's understand and break through let's understand and break down what makes this resume a little different from others so first your resume should have a name on the top <clears throat> now this again uh, you can put it in the center and image on the left you can put it on the left image on the center completely your preference i like it this way so i have my name on the top followed by my designation so i am a biomedical engineer i have done my btech in biomedical engineering so that uh, the designation is given here which is biomedical engineer then you should put the address so now i am in bangalore so i have just put you don't have to put the full address you know street number road number house number not needed you can just put the locality bangalore india or you can just put bangalore as well that's completely fine followed by an email so as you can see the email is very important here i'll tell you the reason why 
so i think this more visible right now so my email is sijinthomas.work@gmail.com but most of the people i have seen they have a very weird email id let's say sijinthomas199123 at gmail.com just given a giving an hypothetical example uh, let's say it's nirav singh116 at the rate gmail.com so these emails are not professional it denotes that you are someone who is not that professional uh, you know when it comes to career so you have to make sure that you have a work mail so usually you call these kind of emails as work mail so it should be something like sijinthomas.work@gmail.com showcases that he is someone who is professional and when you do it from the first year onwards that itself is a quality in you right uh, let's say if one of the subscribers i could think of is uh, rahul so rahul.work@gmail.com so yeah make sure that your email looks quite professional followed by a contact number you have to make sure that your contact number is always active and you can be reached on to that number at any point of time these this these are the things you have to make sure when it comes to the top of the resume coming to the bottom section first thing is the description so description basically is a bio about yourself what is a bio if you ask me you have to tell about yourself why exactly you have taken this course why exactly you want to be in this industry what is your future goals what is your aspirations what impact you want to create in the society pretty much things like that just explain about yourself in a very crisp manner now i have three paragraphs is because i have two and a half years of experience and i i like to talk about it you are a first year or a second year student you don't have to write this much content you know about yourself you can just keep it this much like even one paragraph four lines or three lines is more than enough if you are a student you can put something like i am an aspiring biomedical engineer trying to create an impact in the healthcare domain using engineering principles or you know you can just play around with it and make it look attractive or funny at the same time once description is done you can come down to skills now again misconception most of the people think that you can only add skills when you are you know passing every year in college so after first year you will add certain skills skills after second year i will add signal processing digital processing after third year i will write ai ml after fourth year i will put my project a project management no it doesn't work like that knowingly or unknowingly you already have a lot of skills now once you finished your college i mean 12th standard you would have spent some time doing something which you like maybe you are someone who is good at communication maybe you like talking to people maybe you like uh, playing computer games maybe you like selling things maybe you like graphic designing a lot of things that you like you can put it under skills but you have to put it in a very smart way so if you see my skills uh, i hope you can see see it so if you see my skills it is basically business development sales and marketing product specialization healthcare innovation medical instrumentation revenue generation industry knowledge now i will tell you uh, one thing okay so business development sales revenue generation and uh, medical sales all these international sales all these words are different but the meaning is ultimately same which is sales right but someone who is reading this is like oh he's good at business development okay international sales experience okay then medical sales experience is also there wonderful so it's just a way of telling someone that i have multiple skills but ultimately it comes under one umbrella in sales there are different kind of sales b2b sales b2c sales saas sales d2c sales so different sales domains are there in one umbrella so different things which i have put business development sales and marketing sales training medical sales revenue generation international sales all this ultimately mean the same thing sales but in sales there are different domains so i am just showcasing myself as someone who is knowing a lot of things but the bet- the, the other thing which you should notice is i don't have anything which is very technical i don't have matlab i don't have lab view i don't have programming or anything of that sort why because i don't like to enter that domain or i don't want to pursue that specific career field where technicalities are there so if you are someone who is interested to focus on technical job roles and technical positions you should list down things like that matlab lab view programming digital processing signal processing what not so whatever you want you can put but make sure even though you are in first year you add your skills which you think you are good at after first year you would have learned certain things add those 
with respect to the ones which are already there so that's how as you grow semester by semester your skills will increase semester by semester and you don't have to keep it related to technical you can always put graphic designing you can always put business development video editing feel free to put whatever is your skills feel free to put it there you shouldn't feel that because i'm doing biomedical engineering i should only put skills which are related to biomedical engineering not at all what if a, a, a medical company needs a video editor who has knowledge in medical science uh, who has knowledge in medical equipments and anatomy and physiology maybe you will be the right person if you are a biomedical engineer you know video editing you know technicalities maybe they will hire you twice of what they will be paying a normal video editor so never doubt or never question yourself when you are putting skills in uh, the section okay once that is done come back to experience now i have two and a half years of experience that's why i have couple of companies down here so when you put experience first thing you have to mention the company's name then where they are located in the bottom line you should put your designation and then finally you should Uh, mention basically the date and time for how long you have worked in that specific company but again you are a first year or you are a second year student you don't have experience in that case you can always list down your clubs that you have joined in the college you would have joined ecl you would have joined uh, uh, any club you know like ista or you would have joined uh, english uh, public speaking development club whatever club you would have joined and if you hold a position there you can list it down here So now let's say if you are getting hypothetically if you are getting a position of uh, head of finance okay in ecel so you can mention under your experience section even though if you are in second year you can put entrepreneurship cell your college name and in the under section position you can put head of finance currently working here that's considered as an experience because you are understanding how finance is done right so put those kind of things in the experience section if you are a college student so as many uh, organizations you have joined list down as a, under the experience section so i have i have a lot of experience also you can include your internship uh, things as well you don't have to put a separate section stating internships you can put internships under experience as well now the one advantage that you get over that is your experience looks more even though you are a fresher or even though you are a college student your experience looks more that is a positive that that creates a positive impact for your resume once that is done you you have to put achievements in your case you can put all the achievements you would have got in your 12th standard uh, maybe participating in some of the hackathons or events during your summer vacation any of the achievements that you feel that okay it is an achievement for me feel free to put it down in your resume in my case since i have 2 and 1/2 years of experience in sales i have very much focused it to keep it in alignment with respect to what i am doing so like um, achieved revenue growth of 25% achieved highest target of 1.5 crores Uh, achieved the minimum target min monthly target of 50 lakhs so pretty much whatever fee i feel like okay it's an achievement for me i have listed down under the achievement section then you should fall down to education wherein you should tell which college you are studying right now which degree you are pursuing right now and this is a big mistake which i have done okay i have mentioned my cgpa here but i have not mentioned it here so in one of the interviews where i sat the uh, the person who was taking the interview asked me a question ki what was your uh, cgpa in 12th standard unfortunately it was 68 percentage and right now i i, I can't lie obviously so I, i said it's 68 percentage and then he questioned me back but in engineering you have around 8.16 cgpa so does that mean you know like you are not consistent with your efforts or you tend to lose your focus at times so that is something which i do, i didn't have to face so yeah in my updated resume i have res- removed the cgpa so never put your cgpa in your resume okay always make sure that you are removing your cgpa if at all an interviewer is asking then you can feel free and tell about it over the interview other thing since you are in first year you have to mention three things first where you are studying second where where you did your 12th from and third where you did your 10th from so these three are important until you graduate from the college once you are graduated from the college you can remove it and make it down to two which is your college and which is uh, first one is the college and second one is from where you finished your 12th standard okay and also give a description as to what you have studied or what the course is all about so i have done biomedical engineering so i have just given a description so that the hr can understand what Uh, my education is all about and what my interests are and why exactly i did take up this course 
After education, awards and certifications, first year, the best time to make sure that you can do as many courses as possible. See, all the courses which I did, it is basically in my first year and second year. After first year and second year, I never did a lot of courses and I do, but I don't finish it because I just want to learn whatever I can learn and move on to the next course if I feel bored. But in your case, first year, how to stand out? do as many online courses as possible explore different courses do courses on project management finance healthcare system healthcare engineering graphic designing video editing you name it whatever you want to do you do because the more certifications you have the better your resume looks and it makes you stand out as well right so after awards and certifications ultimately what you have to do is you have to add organizations wherein you are a part of so I was a part of Rotaract Club, Karunia Innovation and Design Studio, SAB, like, you know, Students Association for Biomedical Engineers and pretty much things like this. So add all the organizations, mention the date and time from when to when you have worked there. And once that is done, you move on to the next section, which is external links. Always make sure, irrespective of your experience, irrespective of which year you are in, always make sure that you're adding your LinkedIn profile under the external link section. Why? Usually people feel that first year and second year students in college, they're not that active on LinkedIn. But when you do this one single thing, it makes you stand out from 20, 30 or 40 people in your class maybe, right? So that is something which makes you stand out. And that is something which showcases that he's someone who is very active on LinkedIn, who is very much aligned with respect to industry requirements and he knows what to do, right? And finally, language is known, what all languages you know and how, what all languages you can communicate efficiently. So this is how your resume should look like. And uh, if you see it from top view, this is how it looks like, okay? So name, description, skills, experience, achievements, education, awards and certification, and finally organizations. So that's about it. And I will be giving the Google document for this resume, my resume. It is there in the description. You can open it, edit it according to your preference and you can download it and keep it as your own resume. First thing. Second thing, if you want any resume reviews, if you have made your resume, if you want a specific review as to what or how your resume is, what can be done to improvise, what can be done to make sure that it stands out, feel free to put a message to the admin of the WhatsApp community. Obviously, admin is me, so you will directly reach out to me and I can set aside 20, 15, 20 minutes of my time and your time and we can go through your resume. We can see what can be done to improvise and basically I'll be giving you certain feedbacks, which if you want, you can implement and optimize your resume to the best. Third thing, WhatsApp community is there in the description do make sure that you are joining it because from uh, next week onwards i am planning to start biomedical lectures because there is one book um, bridging medicine medicine and technology for biomedical engineers by uh, mark salzman so i was trying to find that book from last five months and one of the fellow subscribers sent me that book so finally now i can start creating lectures for you guys if you are interested please drop in comments on what all topics you want the lectures to be in and uh, yeah, that is a third important thing. And finally, fourth and foremost, please share this video with your friends and colleagues and working professionals and teachers if you feel this was a very informative video for you. Make your resume and post a story on your Instagram tagging Biomed Bro. And that will be really helpful for us to grow our community and, you know, interact with a couple of more enthusiastic folks like you guys. And in our WhatsApp group, again, I am posting internship opportunities. I am posting job opportunities specifically related to biomedical engineering. If at all you are interested, please feel free to be active on the group. I am sending the job uh, description, the skills required. And most of these jobs are direct referrals from my side because I uh, have good connection with the founders and co-founders of these companies or institutes. So feel free to reach out to me if at all you want, if you are having any job requirements. But don't spam me because I myself am a working professional. So please reach out to me over WhatsApp before calling me and we will see how to go about it. So that's about it. It's a pretty long video, 20 minutes. I hope this video was really helpful. See you in the next. Till then, stay safe, stay home and let's learn and grow together. Signing off, it's your Biomed bro. Goodbye.